So tonight I'm going to entitle this message, uh, Embracing God's System. Embracing God's System. Let's open our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And again, we're using as a topic tonight, Embracing God's System. And uh, let me just give you a, a, a opening statement. Uh, if you're taking notes, this would be something noteworthy uh, to, to be conscious of and, and revisit. And that is faith in God's system puts you in command of your finances. Faith in God's system puts you in command of your finances or it allows you to be in command of your finances it allows you to command your finances uh, as opposed to uh, finances dictating to us uh, what we can or cannot do amen uh, it, it, it enables us to uh, command the outcomes God desires for us in the financial realm. Amen. Y'all with me? Y'all good? The Bible tells us that uh, as, as uh, the Apostle John, divinely inspired by the Lord, and I believe what he was saying, he was giving us the heart of God, is that he wishes or he prays, he desires above all things uh, that we as the people of God would prosper that we would be in health even as our soul prospers. So the degree to which we do prosper, um, and, and, we're, and I'm emphasizing the financial realm, uh, we will prosper in the financial realm to the degree that our soul prospers or to the degree that we understand it, to the degree that we understand God's system, uh, to the degree that we understand God's responsibilities towards us, God's faithfulness towards us, and our responsibilities towards him as those in covenant with him. Amen. We have a covenant responsibility uh, to the Father, uh, to ourselves, and to the world around us. Amen. Y'all with me? Amen. Praise God. Uh, the Bible says that, the, that all the world is awaiting the manifestations of the sons of God. We are the sons of God. We are the sons of God. The world is waiting for us as sons to take our place, to begin to walk in sonship, to begin to walk in dominion. And in dominion specifically in, as it pertains to dominion in the financial realm. Amen. The problems and, and all the shortages that with, with all the, the, the things going on in the earth, the conditions going on in the earth, that should not be going on, the reason they are going on, well, let me put it this way, the conditions going on in the earth that, that, that a lack of finances is, 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 in other words, because of the shortage or the lack of finances, there are certain conditions that exist in the earth. And all those conditions that have their existence because of a lack or a shortage of finances those conditions only exist because the church is not exercising dominion in the financial realm. It's because the finances are in the wrong hands. Are oh, you understand what I'm saying? There's no shortage of money. There's no shortage of resources. There's no shortage of gold. There is no shortage of, of, of money. It's just in the wrong hands. Amen? Amen. And, and so, so God um, desires that his church uh, exercise financial dominion, dominion in the financial realm to, in order that all of the resources, the precious minerals, uh, all that we have attached value to and use as a medium of exchange, his desire is that the church control that as opposed to the world. Are y'all follow what I'm saying? And so, so he's put a system in place uh, whereby that can happen or and, and, and does occur. 
And um, we, we really need to, to open our hearts to God concerning his system um, and embrace it. Embrace his system. Amen. We know about it. We utilize it from time to time. Uh, but we haven't fully embraced it. We haven't fully embraced it. And, and we need to, you know, for our sake as, as well as the world around us. Amen. So have you found uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9? So again, we're talking from the subject of embracing God's system. Um, one, and one of the reasons we have failed to, to actually commit to his system and embrace it uh, as our way of life is out of fear that it won't work. Out of fear that if I do what the Bible says I am to do with what I possess, that I'm going to come up short and I won't have what I need to take care of my needs. Right. So that so there is an underlying fear uh, that it won't work, that that either the system won't work or God won't come through for me or somehow, somehow it just won't work out. So rather than fully commit to God's system and embrace it as a way of life, we kind of play around with it a little bit. We'll utilize it, as, but not but but only up to a point. We'll utilize it up to the point where we won't. In other words, we, we want to make sure that that here's what we do. We take what we possess like a like a big loaf of bread and we pinch off of it out of fear that we may consume it all before we get the next loaf. And so I got to make sure I got enough to last me until next payday. So I can't be, I can't, I, I can't consume it too quickly because if I run out before payday come, I'm going to be short. And so, so I want to make sure I have enough to last. So to that end, we don't, we don't, we, we're not really utilizing the system. We're really working the world system. Are y'all following? Praise God. But look at your neighbor and say, that's changing. That's changing. That's changing. Amen. So 2 Corinthians chapter 9, I want to look at verse number 10. And, and I trust that we, we may look at it tonight, but, but I'm sure you have looked at it before, but, but sometime, you know, in the very, very near future, go back and read verses uh, 1 through uh, 12 in, in this particular chapter. But I want to I wanna look at verse 10. Uh, in verse 10 from the King James says, Now he that ministered seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness, right? Now, that word righteousness, the fruits of your righteousness, you're going to find, I believe, as we continue to look at this, that, that the fruit of your righteousness, that means your righteous works, your right works. Really, it's talking about your, your right works. Of obedience and service to God, you're sowing. You're sowing. Right? Now, now notice who who he's saying, now he that ministers seed to the sower, both ministers bread for your food and multiplies your seed sown and increases the fruits, the results, the consequences of your righteousness, of your right decisions, your right works, of your sowing. Are you following me? Let me read that from the Amplified Translation, the classic. Uh, it says, and God who provides, God who provides seed for the sower and bread for eating will also provide and multiply your resources for sowing and increases the fruits of your righteousness which manifests itself in active goodness, kindness, and charity, or giving, right? So the fruits of your righteousness, your right works, manifest themselves through giving, through sowing, through being a blessing. Are you following me? Now, I want to stress the fact that it is God who, the, the Amplified says, provides seed for the sower as well as bread for the sower to eat. 
So the Lord provides both what is needful as well as seed for sowing. Right? The King James uses the word minister. So understand, for the sower now, having seed to sow, having means to be a blessing, is a part of the ministry of Jesus in, your, in, in the life of the sower. But, but, but also, so is having bread, so is having sufficient, sufficiency for our needs, right? So the Lord, part of his ministry, his present day ministry in the life of the sower. Notice I'm stressing the sower and I'm not just saying the believer. The present day ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ in the life of the sower is to minister seed for sowing or the means for being a blessing. As well as ministering bread for food or meeting the needs that we have. Are you understand what I'm saying? So, so now we, we can kind of get that the Lord, the, him meeting our needs is part of his ministry to us. But, but understand on the same level of, of importance to him as us having our needs met is us having means to be a blessing, seed for sowing, right? It's equally important to him. Are y'all following what I'm saying? And so, so he, he considers this an aspect of his ministry towards us. So we don't have to choose between having our needs met and being a blessing or sowing seed, right? It, it's, he never intended for us to go without in our obedience and service to him. He ministers seed for sowing. He ministers the means for us to be a blessing. He gives us a supply from which to bless and a supply from which to be sustained. Are y'all following? That this, this, is, this is his ministry to the life of the sower. Now, let me read verse 10 from the Passion Translation. Now, listen to it. Listen to the, to the wording. This generous God who supplies abundant seed for the farmer, which becomes bread for your meals, is even more extravagant toward you. First, he supplies every need plus more. Then he multiplies the seed as you sow it so that the harvest of your generosity will grow. Now, let's go back here. Now, it says this generous God supplies abundant seed for the farmer. Now, in the, in the Greek language, the word here for supplies uh, seed, the abundant seed, is the Greek word that is used. Uh, it, it means that he covers the expense. He puts the bill. Right? So in supplying seed, abundant seed, right? It's he he it's and also when it gets down to 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 he, he, it means he's 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 footing the bill for everything. He's covering the entire expense, right? And so not only is he providing abundant seed, but he becomes but 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 the seed he sows becomes bread for our meals, right? He says First, he supplies every need. Again, this is the word used to, for covering every expense, paying every bill, right? Footing the whole entire bill. In other words, in other words, in other words, it's, it's not on you to meet your needs. And it's not on you to go out and gather the seed. Not, it's not on the sower. Are y'all following me? The sower pro covers the entire expense for your needs being met as well as whatever expenses are involved in you being a blessing to the families of the world. Are y'all following me? Now, now who, who ministers this? Seed for sowing and bread for food? Who does it? God, right? The, the Lord, right? It's a part of his present day ministry in the life of the, the sower. Now the question, the question is, am I a sower? The question is not, do I sow every now and again? The question is, am I a sower? Are y'all following what I'm saying? I mean, it, it, I can, I, I, there have been times where I have painted 
the interior of my home. But I am not a painter. Are, are y'all following what I'm saying? There have been times that I've painted drawings and, and sketches or what have you, but I, I'm, I'm not a professional painter in that regard either. So, so we're not talking about the end. Um, the question is not have I sown on occasion. The question is not do I occasionally sow. The question is am I a sower? See, and, and because, see, there's some, there's, some, there, there's some things that qualify us as sowers or not, right? You know, uh, <clears throat> I was visiting my nephews over the weekend, and they asked me about playing basketball. I played basketball before. I used to play it a lot. I used to keep gear in my car in case I had the opportunity. But I, I told my nephews, and it's been over, you know, five years, well, six, six or seven years since I've had a ball in my hand. So since, but I had played ball, but am I a basketball player? No, in other words, I don't play for a living. Right? So, so the sower is one who sows as a lifestyle. He sows for a living. In other words, he doesn't try to go out and earn all he can to make a living. He depends on his sowing to provide him a living. Y'all follow what I'm saying? So the question then, okay, am, am I a sower, right? Now, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> Let me just say this. I'm, I'm really not a sower until I'm dependent on God coming through with the harvest. In, in other words, if, if, if my sowing does not place me in a place of dependency on God coming through with the harvest for me to make it, I'm not a sower. I'm not a sower. In other words, if, if I can, if I, okay, I take a little bit and I'll give here and I'll give there. But I'm careful not to give so much that I can't still meet my needs myself. In other words, I don't give so much that I'm depending on God to come through. You, you follow me? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help us, man. I'm not. I'm, I'm trying to help us. God is, God is up to something. I'm, I'm telling you. I don't just be saying that when I say it. And I, I, want, I, want to, I want to be all the way on board with what he's got on his heart, with what he's got on his mind. I want to walk that out. I want to see that come to fruition in our lives, in the lives of this, this congregation and this ministry, and in the lives of everyone whose destinies are tied to this ministry fulfilling the vision of the house. There are lives whose, there are, there are those whose destinies are tied to you as an individual walking out your call of God. Right? There are those whose destinies are tied to you being in a place of command over your finances. Are y'all following me? <clears throat> Hallelujah. So, 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 so that being said, let's let's look at Mark chapter four just quickly. Just just briefly, Mark chapter four. I just want to point out something. Now I, I believe what I'm what I'm ministering to you tonight is uh is prophetic in this regard, in, in, in terms of what God is doing. Are you are you there in Mark four? Now, we're familiar with this. I, I minister uh, some of this or some along these lines somewhat at Pastor Valentine's last Sunday evening. Look at verse 35. And the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. Now, if you read on throughout the rest of this chapter, you read over to chapter 5, you understand, you see that God had purpose for commanding them to go to the other side, right? And ultimately, it was so that Jesus 
so that Jesus and the, the disciples, everybody with him, the purpose of going to the other side was to take back territory that Satan had claimed as his own, right? He was, he was working through an individual, but well, more than well, all the individuals really, but, but in a major way through a demon-possessed man, all right? And, and so, so uh, Jesus, in going to the other side, was advancing the kingdom was causing the kingdom or the rule of God, the government of God, to advance beyond uh, the borders, right, to go into to foreign territory, if you will. So God's objective for them going to the other side was to take back territory that Satan had claimed for his own. Y'all can see that if you read into chapter 5, right? He goes over there, man gets delivered, he gets free, he wants to come back to Jesus. Jesus says, no, go and tell, go and publish what has happened to you, Right? So now him being a citizen of that land, he has a legal right to remain there. And so he is now in that land preaching the gospel, giving his testimony of, of his deliverance. Are y'all following? Now, here's what the Lord ministered to me as this statement, as this passage pertains uh, to, to my life, to this body, to this body of believers, Right. Let's go to the other side. Prophetically speaking, is also about us as a corporate body of believers taking back territory, right? But the territory that God is, is commanding us to take back, that we're to emphasize with our faith, is, is we're taking back the territory of finances. We're, 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 to, we're to bring... We're to bring the financial realm back under the rule and the government of God. We're to take it back from under the hand, from under the influence, from under the dominion and control of the evil one. And we're to bring it back into alignment with God, back in under the, the rule and the government of God. Are y'all following what I'm saying? I know you hear me. But you're going to have to you're going to have to meditate this and spend some time with the Lord concerning what I'm saying to you, because you're not hearing me on the level you need to hear what the spirit of God is saying. Now, now. Li listen to what I say. Prophetically speaking, we are being commanded to take back. Territory that Satan has claimed as his own, he has claimed the financial realm as his territory. And he is the one that's got the world bottled up, if you will, because of the shortages that exist throughout the earth. And God needs his church to take that back, to bring the financial realm back under the control and dominion of, of the Father, so that the church, in obedience and service to the Father, can once again begin to control and influence the outcomes in the financial realm. See, see, remember my statement. Faith in God's system will what? Will put you in command over your finances. It will, it will give you a place of command and dominion in the financial realm that principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of the world and spiritual wickedness in high places will have to respect. Glory to God. You, you, you better hear what I'm saying now. They'll have to respect your decisions. They'll, 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 they'll have to adjust themselves. To, to, your, to your reign, to your rulership in the financial realm. Glory to God. Territories they have held in bondage and have kept bottleneck will go free. Why? Because, because the wealth will be in its rightful hands 
under the right government. That's the whole point of God blessing Abraham to begin with so that he can be a blessing. Are y'all following? We got a song we used to sing, take back what the devil stole from you. Right? Well, that, let's, let's do it. Okay, all right. But, but now if we, if we continue to read this passage, you'll see uh, verse 37, it says, a, gr a, a great storm arose. And we talked about this, that this storm was just not, it was not natural inclement weather. It was a demonically induced storm. It was Satan's attempt to oppose Jesus in, in, in from advancing the kingdom. He was trying to stop Jesus, right? And we, we know how that worked out, right? That, that didn't work out too well for the enemy, right? But now understand, understand, understand. Understand, the same way Satan tried to oppose Jesus and the disciples in walking out their command to go to the other side, understand Satan will try to oppose each of us as we walk out God's command for us to take back the financial realm and bring it back un, 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 under the rulership of God. He, Satan's going to try to oppose you. Are you understand what I'm saying? Now, now, if you notice in this passage, after the storm arose, right, it talks about how the, the waves beat into the ship and rain, wind blowing, the ship was now full of water, right? Now, the disciples woke Jesus up. Jesus was asleep, the hinder part of the ship. He was at peace. He was at ease. The disciples woke Jesus up, and Peter basically accuses him of not caring about their welfare and their well-being. He actually accuses Jesus that he doesn't even care that they are about to die. Now, can you imagine how severe, how harsh the, 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 the conditions of that storm must have been to provoke a seasoned fisherman to that type of fear? See, I imagine that being seasoned fishermen, they had a protocol to follow, if you will, right? Uh, standard operational procedures, what to do in the middle of a storm. And they did all of that, yet it wasn't working. It was to no avail, and so the, they, they had no hope of making it, so the fear set in, they were afraid that they were going to die. Are you understand what I'm saying? So, so in their natural mind, in their natural ability, in the human, in the natural human wisdom of man, they could not prevail over the opposition of the enemy. Right? And 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 what the Lord wants us to understand is where He's taking us, we cannot get there. Out of our natural mind and by natural means. We will not be able to, to overcome the opposition relying on the natural wisdom of natural man without the benefit of the Holy Ghost and relying on our natural abilities. But the good news is he never intended that we do get there that way. Now, once Peter woke Jesus up, right? The Bible says he arose, peace, be still. Shh. The Passion Translation equates that to him, to what he said at, to the storm was submit to the will of God. So they prevailed over the opposition. They prevailed over the enemy trying to stop them, not by natural means, but by supernatural means, right? By the, by the supernatural power and ability of God being released into their lives, into their affairs, into their situation. By supernatural, supernatural means, 
By the anointing, we, we refer to it at times. By the blessing is another term we use, right? Are y'all following me? <clears throat> so now, God desires that we take back the territory Satan has claimed for his own, particularly in the financial realm. And, he, and the reason he's put a system in place for us to live by, see, Embracing his system, faith in his system, releases his supernatural power that's needful for us to overcome the opposition. Are y'all follow what I'm saying? Did y'all get that? So, so why embrace God's system? Because what, we can say it this way, why do it God's way? Because it, apart from God's way, there is no God's power. In order to have God's power working in our lives, we have to do it God's way. See, God's power is, is released as we embrace his way, his system. Doing it our way, the way of man, the, the, the trusting and depending on the, the natural wisdom or the wisdom of natural man, the, the, the only thing the wisdom of natural man can produce is the ability of natural man. And, and we're going to run up, there will be opposition on a level beyond the ability of natural man to overcome. And that's why Satan is banking on trying to keep us uh, entrenched, if you will, uh, in bondage to the world system or the world's way of doing things. Because he knows that will only generate so much power and ability. It won't generate any, any power on any level beyond his opposition. Y'all got me? Okay, okay. So now look. Go with me to Deuteronomy 28. You there? Deuteronomy 28. Now, I'm going to just uh, look at verse 8 and 9 for right now. Look at verse 8. Verse 8, Deuteronomy 28, verse 8 says, The Lord will command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouse. And in all that thou settest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And the Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. Does that not sound like embrace his system? The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouse and in all that you set your hand to, and he shall bless you in the land which the Lord thy God giveth you. And the Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself, holy and set apart unto himself, to live under his care. This is what that amounts to. As he has sworn unto thee, if you shall keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his way. If you shall embrace his system, or we can say it this way. If you become a sower, because the system involves sowing. Seed time and harvest, sowing and reap. Okay, okay. He's saying, I'm going to command the blessing on you and your storehouse, and on all you set your hand to. He's going, we're talking about living in the commanded blessing of the Lord. The blessing that has been commanded on you, appointed to you. The blessing that's on you, you can say it this way, by, by executive order. Heaven has issued an executive order for you to be blessed. To live 
under the divine empowerment of God. A commanded blessing. Are you following what I'm saying? Glory to God. Now, this blessing, the divine empowerment of God commanded upon your life is supernatural. Hell has no answer for the blessing. Amen. Satan has no answer for the blessing. See, God's system takes your life out of Satan's hands. And, and, and I'm talking about the financial realm. God's system, God's way of doing things in the financial realm in order to prosper financially and to increase God's system uh, God's system brings your finances under his covering, his protection. We talked about the tithe. It was, it was stated earlier when we prayed concerning the tithes and offerings, right? That, that, that honoring God with our tithes and our offerings allows him to legally get involved in our lives. He said, prove me and see if I won't open you the windows of heaven and empty you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. Right? He says, I will. He himself will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He's going to stop the devil in his tracks. That's what he said. He would do. This is part of that commanded blessing. See, see, he's, so, so the devil will not destroy the fruit of your ground. He will not be able to diminish the quality of your life. He will not be able to hinder the quality of your life. He will not be able to dictate the terms of your life. He, he will have no legal say-so in the financial aspect of your life. And then he says, your vines won't cast their fruit before it's time to fill. Not only will Satan not be able to, 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 to tear it up, but he won't be able to stop your vines from producing the maximum yield. Okay, what are we talking about, right? Prove me now who will see if I won't open you the windows of heaven, empty you out of blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. He says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He will not destroy the fruit of your ground. So understand, at that time, it was an agrarian society, and the more fertile your ground, the more productive, the more fruitful your fields or what have you. Your fields, your fields, your fields. Oftentimes when your people meet one another, they're talking business or whatever, somebody says, well, what field are you in? What's your line of work? What's your vocation? How do you make a living? So when they're talking about field, we're talking about a lifestyle, your vocation, your livelihood, how you make a living, right? So now if God is going to rebuke the devourer for your sake, now, now we, most of us uh, in, in this ministry anyway, we're not, our livelihood is not out behind the plow in a literal field. But each of us have a field of vocation that we work in. And, and honoring God with the tithes, embracing his system and the tithes are part of his system, allows God to, to, to stop the devil in his tracks where it pertains to your field, to your livelihood, to your vocation, to your job. Right? right? He, it allows him to rebuke the devourer. The, it allows him to stop the devil in his tracks when he's trying to eat up or to consume your livelihood or diminish the quality of your life by, by whatever. Are oh, you understand what I'm saying? And 
get you the maximum yield. In other words, your, the, your vine, your vine won't, won't drop the fruit before it's time in the field. To me, that sounds like raises, promotions, increases. Are y'all following what I'm saying? See, they, 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 they may be the, the, system, the, the system of increase or whatever at your job may be such that it happens incrementally. You're under review every certain amount of time. But you know, God, God, can, God is not bound by that. He can cause the CEO to change the whole system just to bless you. Are you understand what I'm saying? If, if he got to bless the whole staff to bless you, he don't mind. What those people don't understand is their business is doing as well as it is because of your presence there as one in covenant with God doing what you do as unto the Lord as opposed to unto man. Are you following me? So then, verse 8 says, he will command the blessing upon you in your storehouses. Get a storehouse. Open a savings account. Look what it said. It says houses. Open more than one. How is he going to feel something you don't have? Are you following what I'm saying? So this blessing then is predicated on us keeping the commandments of the Lord, walking in his way. It's predicated. This supernatural power and ability being released into our lives is predicated on us embracing his system. His system. And when you fully embrace it, you are dependent on him keeping his word to you for you to be sustained. Now, so, so what did I say? I said faith puts you in command over your finances. What do I mean by faith? Faith in its simplest, simplest way I can put it is simply this. Believing God's word is true and acting like it. Living like it. That's, that's, that's all it is in its simplest form. Just believing the word of God is true and, and, and living like it. Do we, I mean, if we believe it's true, it'll be reflected in how we act and how we live. And so if we can't see any action in our lives that correspond with what we profess to believe, we don't believe it. That's, that's just all. Hey, we don't believe it. See, when we're, when, we're, when we're obeying and serving God at our convenience, we don't believe it. Are y'all following what I'm saying? All right, all right, all right. So, so this blessing then is predicated on, on embracing God's system, or you could say, on us becoming a sower. Now go to Galatians chapter uh, 6. You there? All right, so let me read, let me read verse 7, 8, and 9, and I, uh, let me just stop. Okay, look at verse 7. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, in sowing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. In due season. So there's, listen, listen, every seed you sow has a due season. There's a harvest to every seed you sow. There's a due season to reap. There is a 
due season to reap the harvests of the seeds you sow. Now, we have been conditioned by the world and by religion to, to kind of think that that season is a long way off. And, 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 to, and to some degree, there is seed, time, and harvest. But the length of the time between sowing and reaping can, 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 can be condensed is being condensed. Okay. We talked about we talked about the, the, the lady who, who who her husband was in debt. He died. The creditors was coming. She asked the man of God for instruction. He said, go borrow some pots. Don't borrow a few. Pour out the oil into the pot. As long, as long, as long, as long as she poured the, 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 as long as she had a pot, the oil flowed. The oil didn't stop until she ran out of pots. So, in other words, as long as, see, the anointing will flow in your life is, uh, to the degree you have the capacity to receive it, to believe it, right? Okay, so now look, so, so what he said, okay, take the oil, sell it pay your bill, live off the rest. Right? Now, I, I, I don't know how long it took her to go borrow a bunch of pots. When I read that, I mean, to me, it's like, okay, she went from being in debt to the, to the point of, of people about to come take her son to debt free and financially free in a day. In a day. The Bible tells us God created the heavens and the earth in six days. If he can do that in six, can he get us out in one? Because it'll be by his power, right? But see, his power is predicated on us embracing his system. And the reason we're not seeing his power on that level and to that measure a lot of the time is because it, it happens. It, it, where, where, to what end have we embraced the system? To what end have we released our faith? To what end is there an expectation of the harvest coming and when? See, we missed it. You know, it don't have to take some way far off day in the future. Particularly in, in the present era we're in now with Jesus soon to come. Are y'all following me? All right, so let, let, me, let me read. Look at verse 10. As we therefore have opportunity. Let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. That's God's system. That's, that's a, we, should, we should be preparing for opportunity. We should expect opportunity and be prepared, right? Because didn't he say, I'll minister seed to the sower? Listen, let me tell you. Once you begin... Once we begin to take on the needs of others and have a heart and a desire to bless others, just that attitude change will cause more to be released into your hand. As uh, I think it's Proverbs 11, 24 and 25. Right. OK, but now let me read verse. Uh, let me read verses uh, seven and eight on, from the Phillips translation. Now, listen to this. Don't be under any illusions. You cannot make a fool of God. A man's harvest in life will depend entirely on what he sows. A man's harvest in life will depend entirely on what he sows. Okay. Okay, thank you, Lord. Help me with this now. 
So, if my harvest is going to depend entirely on what I sow, and we agree the book says that, right? Right? Okay, harvest being the quality of my life, the level of which I'm prospering, right? That's dependent upon uh, the level of my sowing. Now, I'm going to say something that, that, that sometimes make us, uh, we don't want to hear. If, if you, if you want to prosper beyond what you currently are, sow more than what you currently sow. If the harvest is dependent on my sowing and I want a greater harvest, I, 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 got, I got to produce, I got to sow the seed that will produce a greater harvest. Now, a lot of times we don't want to hear that in the church, but we don't have no problem with it in the world system. The world system said, okay, uh, you gonna make you you gonna make uh fifteen dollars an hour, right? And I'm gonna give you time and a half to work more than you're supposed to work. And I want the time and a half. Sign me up, give me some hours, give me some overtime. Okay, I don't have no problem working more to get more. Why do I have a problem sowing more to harvest more? Because we've been conditioned to place more confidence in, in our own ability, in the wisdom of this world and its system. We've been conditioned to take the word of that employee, that employer, more so than the word of God. He just said, it, listen, if I, want a, if I want a bigger harvest, it, 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 my harvest is going to depend entirely upon what I sow. So a lot of times, you know, the, 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 to, to reap on a greater level is to sow on a greater level. And he said, well, I don't have it. Okay. Are you a sower? Because he said, I'll minister seed to the sower. Right? Lord, I want to sow more. Right? In fact, I just hear it right now. You, you want to sow more? He says, do it. Do it. In other words, you have the means to sow more than what you're currently sowing right now without him bringing more into your hands. Or something. Is it not in your hand? Then you can do with it what you want. Now, 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 now. I'm, I'm, seek the Lord, get his guidance, get his direction. Because whatever is in our hand and all that's in our hand, we, we, it, it's in our possession, but he owns it. We're stewarding over it. Now, as he leads and directs, now, if, we, if we're embracing his system and obeying him with what we have, he becomes responsible to seek to bring in whatever is needed so that you don't lag and come up short. So, so, so the sowing, so to embrace his system is to embrace his cause. To favor his righteous cause. Because our obedience, see the sowing should be obedience and service to him. So I should embrace his cause, his kingdom cause, and I yield to God all that I am and all I possess to address that, to push that, to contribute to that being established. So I can't embrace the system without embracing the cause. A lot of times we try to work the system without embracing the cause. And just because of spiritual law, it'll work to some degree. But because of the motives of the heart. Uh, let, me, I, let me say it this way. I heard, I heard one man say it this way. Because we, we have a heavenly account. And I believe God makes record and, and, and takes note of our giving and, and our heavenly account is credited. Right? So because of the law and how it works, God will give you credit for the giving, but you might have a little trouble withdrawing it. <laughs> That's the best way I can say it. But when the, when the motives of the heart are pure and aligned with God. Lord, I recognize I am not my own, but I belong to you. 
your word says you have blessed me to be a blessing. So all that I am and all I have, I submit to you right now to serve and obey you. You direct me. Give me what you want me to do. And you understand, anytime God is speaking to your heart to give, to bless, to sow, to do anything like that, it's, it's to further his cause. It's addressing a cause that's dear to him on behalf of somebody else, but also on behalf of us. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Any leading and prompting of the Holy Spirit to give is designed, listen to me, it's designed to bring an end to the curse manifesting in your life. So particularly as it pertains to sowing, you know, and being a blessing, it's designed to bring an end to the curse of lack and shortage from manifesting in our lives. It's designed to bring us into uh, into what he declared and ordained for us from the beginning. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Now, with these last couple of minutes, let me just let, let me give you this statement. So, so uh, God's system is supernatural in its operations, right? We, we, we understand that, right? God's system is supernatural in its operation, and meaning it's, it's not subject to the economy. It's not subject to the conditions going on in the earth. It's not subject to the evil going on. It's not subject to the Dow syndrome. It's not subject to the financial experts. It's not subject to any, uh, any, any, any condition or anything as hell has to throw at you. You know why? Because, because it's, it's not fear-based. It's faith-based. It's not, it's not self-centered and self-serving. It's Christ-centered and Christ-serving. And that's completely, entirely opposite of the world system, of its ruler's system. Y'all follow me? Now, so let me just read a couple of, just a few things, just a couple of statements to you concerning God's system or, or, or the, why it's important, why it's significant, why really it's essential to sow, right? Uh, because that's how increase comes. The in, it increase comes by sowing, right? Amen. Increase comes by sowing. Uh, it's, it's, it, it comes by supernatural means, not by natural means. So, so we, we, listen, it doesn't matter how far behind it looks like you are in the natural, what you got in place or don't have in place, God can catch you up. God is catching us up. His system is designed in, to, 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 to work. It's supernatural in operations, meaning it, it, it doesn't go according to the natural course of time. It's supernatural. You follow what I'm saying? All right. So another another reason to sow is because uh, it, it, that's just the way we're supposed to live. And I, I didn't get to it, but today, but Second uh, uh, Corinthians chapter nine, six, beginning at verse six, and going on on up to, to verse twelve, will bear that out. It's just the way we're supposed to live, uh, sowing and reaping, right? Um, Sowing, sowing leads to having more, right? We, we, we talked about that. But now listen, sowing supersedes and overrides all evil financial conditions. Sowing, your sowing will supersede and override all evil financial conditions. Look at, look at Isaac's situation in Genesis 26, 1 through 6, drop on down to verses 12 and uh, 13. Here he was in a land where there was a great famine like it was with his father. Yet, he was told to remain in that land, in the middle of that famine, in the middle of those evil conditions, not to seek relief by going to Egypt. A lot of us seek relief by going to the world system. We're looking for relief from the pressure that the enemy 
has manufactured and we look for relief from that to a solution that he gives? No. He said, stay in this land and I will be with you. I'll be with you. You got to understand, you're going to have to develop a consciousness, a presence of mind that God is with you, that you're not alone, that this Bible really is true. You will have to make a decision to believe that the Bible is God speaking to you and then live like it's really true. Are you following me? So what happened? He sold in the worst possible conditions. He embraced God's system. He sold. And, and even in the midst of a, a drought and a famine where, where nothing is growing, right, he not only got a harvest, but a hundredfold, he reaped the maximum yield of the seed ability to reproduce itself. To me, that's 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 Second Corinthians nine and ten. I minister seed for you to sow, and then I'm gonna turn around and and take what you sowed and multiply it, so that the harvest you get is far beyond the seed you sowed. He reaped a hundredfold, the maximum return on seed sown during a famine. So sowing, God's system is supernatural in its operations. It's unaffected by the evil conditions in this world, by the economy. But it, 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 whatever's going on in there, it matters not. God's system supersedes and overrides all evil conditions in our lives. Why? Because it's not of this realm. It didn't come from the heart of man. It came from the heart of God. And, and, and Understanding this and embracing this is how you exercise dominion in the financial realm. Amen? Praise God. Let's stand to our feet there. Glory to God. Father, tonight we thank you, Lord, for the ministry of your word by your spirit, for just unfolding it and revealing it to us. And Lord, as we hear uh, you bearing us witness that is you, we are responding, we're making adjustments. And our attitude and our beliefs, our convictions, even in our values, Lord, we're making adjustments to where we are favoring your righteous cause, where we are valuing the service we render to you above uh, the comfort we've been in pursuit of, Lord, because we, we are at a place of understanding, knowing that you are committed, fully committed to our welfare and our well-being to come through for us. And so we purpose to do our part uh, in our covenant together that your will be done in the earth, Lord, particularly the financial arena. So we thank you for what has transpired here today. We pray, Lord, that we would just, as we can continue to meditate and chew on what you're saying to us, that our understanding will continue to increase, our revelation will increase, and by that revelation we'll have restoration. So, Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over all of us here tonight, all who are represented, all who joined us virtually in our families and households, Father. And I pray, God, that we would continue to enjoy the communion of the Holy Spirit, Father, that we have uh, with you, Lord, and with one another, that we will enjoy uh, the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Father, and your unconditional love towards us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen.